using today are the 2018 iPad Pro in the 11 inch size as well as the second generation Apple Pencil. I also plan on creating the entirety of this planner using the app Keynote that comes with the iPad. If you don't already have Keynote on your iPad, you can go to the Apple Store and download it. It's free. Also, if you don't have an Apple device or access to Keynote, you can go to iCloud.com and create an Apple iCloud account and then use Keynote on their internet browser. Some of the functions might be slightly different, but it still works basically the same. I also want to add in that you can create digital planners or digital notebooks not using Keynote or Apple devices. You can use it on any tablet by using PowerPoint or Google Slides. The functions should be similar if not the same, but today I'm going to be using Keynotes because this is how I create my digital planners or notebooks and I like using Keynote on my iPad. And also a small disclaimer before really getting into it, I normally use other designing apps like Procreate to create my covers or specific pages or different layouts. I don't normally just use Keynote, but I have used just Keynote before to make my notebooks or digital planners. So for the sake of this tutorial, I will only be using Keynote today. If you are interested in my other videos on how I create different aspects of the planner using different apps, I'll have them linked down below for you to check out. So this is what Keynote looks like whenever I first open up the app. I have a bunch of folders where I have my different projects organized. And normally what I like to do is I just go in and I create a new presentation. And since Keynote has updated slightly, it does look a little bit different than how it did whenever I first did this tutorial. But the premise, again, is still the same. I just click a blank white background and I will delete the text boxes that already come up because I don't need those. And with the new updates in Keynote, they automatically set the slide size to be 16 by 9. So that's like widescreen size. And that's something that I don't really like. So I have to go into these three dots up here. And then I'm going to go down to Document Setup. This is also where you'll go if you want to switch the orientation of your slides. So let's say you want to create a portrait notebook or a portrait planner. You can easily switch to the portrait size. So they already have sizes down here. They have 4x3, 16x9, 3x4, and a square version. I often use the 4x3, but lately I've actually been using the custom option and I'll go in and I'll create the custom option for the pixels. And so because I'm using the iPad Pro, the screen real estate's a little bit bigger. So I've actually looked up the pixel dimensions of the iPad, and this is what I have found on the Apple website. So I like to do 2,388 by 1638. And obviously if you want to do portrait mode, you'll just switch the width and the height. So that's what I'm going to use today. And so now I have my blank white PowerPoint, and this is what I'm going to use to start the foundation of my planner. So, usually if I want to use a background, I'll go in and I'll pick a photo for the background. Sometimes I'll use it, uh, leave it as blank white, other times I'll do like a slight gray tone. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it blank white because I think that looks nice. And then I'm going to go into the plus button up here and go into the shapes icon. And I'm going to pick the rounded square shape. And I'm just going to bring it up. And this green dot in the corner helps you round out your corners. So if you want a more rounded effect or less rounded effect, I usually go about midway. I kind of like it to be mostly square but with a slight round corner because that's how traditional notebooks are. And in my previous digital planner tutorial video, I just did a wide landscape version, but today I'm going to make it look like the planner is an open book with the rings down the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to orient this. And when I have it like how I want it, I'll just copy and paste and then move it on to the other side. So now it looks like I have two blue blocks if we're being real. So now I want to apply an effect to both of the boxes and a little trick in Keynote is you can hold down with one finger and select with another one and it selects both of them and then you can go into your paintbrush and choose different effects for them. So I'm going to go in actually and change the color. So you can use the preset color palettes that they have here. You can go into the color squares or you can do a color wheel. You can also do gradients. 
often I'll click image and I'll select an image. Sometimes I'll have a texture saved because I like the textured look. Uh, selected a texture that I had already created in Procreate and saved. I can go into how I make the textures in Procreate if you're interested, but if you are looking for a texture without having created already, you can use websites like Unsplash to find textures. Unsplash is a great website for, for finding stock like photos because all of that on that website is commercial free. Or you can purchase commercial licenses from other creators, which I've done before. You can use Pinterest, but again, you might want to be careful with copyright. So now I have a texture on my planner. I'm also going to select them both again and I'm going to apply a shadow and by applying a shadow you're going to make your planner look like it's more or less sitting on a desk versus just being flat. So I sometimes play around with the shadows to determine which one I think is best. Oftentimes I will use the second shadow but for the sake of this planner I don't think it's going to look quite right so I'm going to use the one down here. Alright so now I'm going to go in and actually add the pages. So I'm going to go up to my plus button again, hit the shapes option, and I'm going to go with the regular rectangle. I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the fill color to white. And then I'm just going to go in and size this. I want to see some of the cover peek out from behind my paper, so I don't make the paper as large as the cover that I used. So now that I have my white paper, I'm going to go into my paintbrush for the effects. I'm actually going to turn on shadow here, and I like using the second shadow option because it puts a shadow on just along the edge of the shape, so it looks like the paper is coming off the planner cover a little bit. And so I'm actually going to copy and paste this page. I'm going to do my best to line it up and you'll see that there's even a deeper line for the shadow. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this dot and I'm going to push it back a little bit. And I don't know if you can see this very well, but now there's like a slight edge. Now it looks like I have multiple paper within this planner. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this one or two more times so it looks like I have a stack of paper within the planner. And if you're struggling with this, it is a little difficult to try and move it ever so slightly so it looks like there's a stack, so feel free to play around with that a bit. Another thing that may or may not help you is that if you go up here into the dots, like the main settings of Keynote, and you scroll down, you'll see this option that says guides. And often what I'm doing, or what I do, is I leave the guides on, I'll leave all the guides on, and anytime I feel like the guides are restricting me from placing something exactly where I want in Keynote, I'll go in and turn all the settings off, and then I have free movement. So I'll copy and paste so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, paste, and I'll move this onto this side. So these yellow lines that pop up are helping me guide my paper. They're helping me measure exactly where I want this paper to be on this slide. But if I go into guides and I turn all the settings off and they have edge, center, and spacing guides, you can turn on or turn off any of the individual ones you want. I just turn them all on or turn them all off, but now we don't really see these yellow lines. I can place this anywhere without help from a keynote. And so sometimes I like using this if I need something to go in a very specific place. That keynote's not let me because of the guides, but otherwise I usually leave them on. So I'm going to go and turn those back on. And now I'm going to repeat the process on the other side. And repeat the process. So now I have my planner pages in. So now to make this look more like a planner instead of just multiple boxes on a page, you can add rings. And so I like to create my rings outside of Keynote, so I'm going to pull in an image that I have that I have already made using Procreate. If you're interested in how to make digital planner rings, 
in Keynote and in Procreate and other apps. I already have a tutorial like that up on my channel and I'll have that linked down below, but I'm just gonna go ahead into my images and pull rings that I already have made. So here is just one ring that I already have made. I, ha I created Happy Planner Inspired Rings. Um, once I have this selected, I'm gonna go into the paintbrush. I'm gonna go over to Image. I'm gonna click Edit Mask just because there's so much white space surrounding the image and I don't need all of it. Okay. And again, because I want this to be a little bit more realistic, I'm gonna go into my paintbrush. I'm gonna go over to Style and then hit Shadow again. And I'm just gonna choose a shadow that I think looks the best for the rings. And I, I don't have a set way of determining what shadow I wanna use. I feel like I use a different shadow every time I go to create. A different planner it's just really how it looks at the time whenever I'm creating so now that I have my ring I'm going to go in and place it maybe change a few things about the cover or the page if I need to whenever you insert an image in Keynote it automatically constrains the proportions of the image if you want to be able to change the width or the height without also changing the subsequent dimension. You can go into the paintbrush and then go over to the arrange option within the paintbrush and then deselect constraint proportions. And then you're able to move it exactly where you want or size it exactly how you want. So I'm just gonna edit the coverage just a little bit to make it fit within the ring. And I think that's pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to copy and paste my ring in. And then I'm going to select multiple, copy, paste. All right, so now I have my rings in. If you're interested in purchasing Happy Planner rings for yourself that I created, I have a listing like that available in my shop. Plenty of different colors for you to choose from, so feel free to check that out. I'll have it linked down below. But now I have my open book planner. So now we're gonna go ahead and move into the tabs. So I go up to the plus button, I go over to the shapes, and I like using the rounded rectangle again for the tabs. So I'm gonna move that in. And I don't like this bright standard blue color that it usually uses, so I always go in and I change the color. So since my cover is teal, maybe I'll choose from their teal, teal palette, but I think it looks really bright. Let's go with this, that looks nice. So similarly, I like to use shadows on these. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna use my second shadow. And we're going to size the planner tab down. So I have this sized how I want, and I'm actually gonna go into the arrange option, and I'm gonna move this back, because I don't want to see the tab in front of the paper that I created. And I'm actually gonna move this back a little bit. So I'm gonna copy and paste a second tab. Oops. And I'm going to place it pretty close to my first tab and I'm going to use the arrange function and then just slide. I'm going to detab off to see what it looks like. I'm going to move it back just a little bit more. Nope, not that much. So now I moved it back just enough for it to go behind the page, but also slightly go behind the first tab again. And this again is what's going to make your planners or notebooks look even a little bit more realistic. I like creating my planners like this where it looks like that there is a tab behind a tab. Just a slight drop shadow. Select that, copy and paste those two tabs and repeat the process. And for the sake of this video, I'm gonna have these tabs be my month tab. So I'm gonna have 12 tabs going down this side of the page. Okay, so now that I have my tabs down the side of the page, I only have 10 tabs with the size that they are now to span this side of the page, and obviously there are 12 months, so we need to do some a little adjusting. And I run into this issue a lot, but I find that it's okay because I don't wanna spend a bunch of time trying to size each tab exactly how I need to when I can just go in and select all of 
the tabs like so. And if you end up selecting something extra like I am, just be sure that you deselect it, otherwise you might run into some issues. So once I have all the tabs selected, I like to hit group. And this is, gonna, this is going to group all of my shapes where I can easily move or manipulate them all at once. So I'm actually moving the tabs where I need them. I'm trying to size them to where I can add in two more tabs. And then I'm going to ungroup them because there's really no need for me to keep them together. And I will select, add in my last two tabs. So now I have all 12 of my tabs. If you wanna add in more tabs, for example, like a finance section or a wellness section, you can go in and you can add tabs in the top. Um, there is really no set rule on how to create your planner, especially if it's for you. So something you can do to make the planner look even a little bit more realistic is you can go into the plus button and go back into your rounded square and then what I like to do actually is create kind of a realistic looking stitch around the planner. A lot of journals have stitching and so I'll have my rounded square selected and I'll actually go into the fill and I'll scroll all the way over until I see this no fill option just because I don't need the square filled. Then I'll go in and select border and this is where you can go in and personalize it, choose the color of the stitching and the type of stitching that you want so I normally like to use like these dashed options. Obviously they have like the dotted and straight line. So I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna pick a dashed option. And then I'm gonna go into either a white stitching. Sometimes I'll use a stitching that's um, slightly darker or slightly lighter than the cover. And I can't really see this stitching very well. So I need to go in and go back into my paintbrush and change the width of the border. So I can make my stitching really thick, as you can see here, or I can make it thin. And so I want my stitching to be pretty thin, but I want it to be viewable. So I'm going to stick with three point here in this case. And now we have this stitching along the side that makes it a little bit more realistic. If you want to add a drop shadow you can it does make it look more realistic as well so I'll go in and I can add a shadow again click on different shadow options just to see what looks best for the stitching pretty close to the edge of the notebook because that's where your stitching will be and again the guides are messing with me here I don't really like how it wants me to place the stitching to like so I'm just gonna go into the guides turn them all off and then place the stitching exactly where I want along my notebook. So now the stitching is slightly on top of our rings, which I don't like and which isn't very realistic. So I'm gonna go back into my range feature and move it to where it's behind the rings, but still in front of the planner page that I created. So now we have our stitching. I can go in and copy and paste that to the other side of our planner. We can also go in and create a cover for our planner, so I'll go ahead and show you how I do that. I'm going to go in and select, select a blank page and I'll move it. Alright, so now I have a blank page and I'm going to use this page as my cover. And copy my page that I already created. So I moved the stitching out of the way and I'm just going to move it back. Then I'm gonna go in and paste that cover page here. And I, I like where it's placed. I think that's pretty good. So now I'm gonna go in and get my rings again. All right, so here's the ring. I'm gonna go in and edit the mask again. Add a shadow. Adjust the proportions of the image. Okay, so I like how that ring is placed. So I'm going to copy and paste my rings down the side. Another thing worth mentioning when creating your planners, let's say you are um, creating them in such a way where you're accidentally touching a bunch of elements and you're accidentally moving them around and it's just the pain. 
So what you can do actually is select anything that you've put down on your slide, go into the paintbrush and over on the arrange feature you can click lock and this will lock whatever you put down. So whenever I go to try and like let's say move my rings I won't accidentally select and move my planner cover or any other elements of my planner. So I'll use that feature a lot especially whenever I place paper and covers because once I go in to add templates and different features. Sometimes I'll accidentally select the paper and move it around. So using that lock feature is really handy. So now I'm just copy and pasting the rings down the side for my cover. Perfect. So now I have my cover. You can go in, you can add a spot for the name. So let's go ahead and do that. I will change this to white. Maybe I'll add a border if I want. So now we have a spot for the name. I want to mention something pretty important and it's this thing called master slides within Keynote. I'm basically showing you the process of how I go about creating my planners. I'll start a blank page, I'll go in and I'll make all my shapes, pull in my rings, pull in my textures, what have you. And then, only then will I decide whether or not I want this to be a master slide. So a master slide is basically a slide where once created, you can't go back and edit it unless you go back into the master slides feature. So I like using master slides for creating blank pages like this. Actually, like just tap on a random spot in the PowerPoint. And I'm going to click select all and it's going to select all the features within this slide. I'm going to click copy. Then I'm going to go into my paintbrush and down here you'll see edit master slide. I'm going to go into that and you're going to see all these different slide options that they've already made for you. I'm going to go down to the blank option here and then tap and click paste and then it's going to have my pasted page here. Then I'm going to click done. Then down here at the plus button you're gonna have all your master slides. And then we have this blank option that we previously created. And if I click that, I, I can't go in and re-edit this unless I go back into the master slide and edit. Whatever I put on the master slide is going to be applied to every single slide. So this really will cut down on workflow. So I like using master slides to have a blank page. And then I'll go in and I'll create the whole template and all that stuff. I won't be creating the monthly or weekly templates in this video. I'm just going to show you how to create the basis of your planner. I already have a video going into how to create the templates, so if you're interested in that, go check that out. But now that I have my master slide, I'm going to go in and I'm actually just going to go and delete the other slide that I created. So now I have the master slide and I have 12 tabs and I need to go into the months for those tabs. Master slides is also especially tricky if you want it to look like your tabs are flipping. So I don't generally like using master slides if I want the tabs to be flipped, but I'm gonna show you how to use master slides first and then I'll go into how to flip the tabs just because I've had so many questions on how to do master slides. So now I'm pasting to make sure I have 12 slides for each of the 12 months. So now that I have that, I'm actually going to um, tap anywhere on the slide and hit edit master. I'm gonna go in to each tab and I'm gonna click link and I'm gonna have this link to the first slide. And then I'm gonna go in and link this to the second. Click, hit link, link to slide number three. You can also link tabs to websites, um, which is something I often do. I'll link you to my help page and you can do that up here. So link to web page email. But I'll link to slide number four, and then you'll just go down and link to all of the slides. So, okay, so now that I've finished linking the tabs, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click the done button. And it's going to take me back to my PowerPoint. So now you can see that the tabs are linked on the first slide, but because this is a master slide and what is really great about master slides is that it has applied it to every single slide. So do not use a master slide if you want something different on each page. So let's say you want a monthly template on one page, 
do not make that your master slide and then try and do a weekly template on that same page. Because what you do on the master slide will apply to all the slides within your project. So I like using master slides for creating a blank page and then going in to the plus button and all the shapes or the effects to add stuff to this. You can create multiple master slides and I'll show you how to do that. So let's say I go up to my paintbrush, I click edit master slide. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna copy and paste the master slide we created previously. And now I have a second master slide. And then I can go in and let's say for whatever reason, I just want a blue square on some of my planner pages. I'll click done. Then I'll go down into the plus button again and then add the blue square master slide. So this is something that you can do for certain templates that you need to repeat within your planner, such as the monthly template or the weekly template or a daily template. So master slides are, is really handy, but only when used in the right way. So now that I have my planner, I'm gonna go in how to flip your tabs. Because I wanna show you how to flip the tabs and I don't necessarily like using master slides for that, I'm actually gonna revert back to just using the normal slides. Hang on. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go back into the regular slides to show you how I would flip tabs since I don't like using master slides for that. So whenever you click on this tab and you want it to flip to the other side, so let's say this is January and you want it to flip over there, all you have to do is basically move the tab over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this tab and I'm gonna go into my paintbrush and I'm gonna uh, push it all the way forward to the front just so it's easier for me to grab. And I'm gonna move it over to this side and then go back into my arrange feature and move it back. So there is the January tab. Then, let's say I click on February, I need to move the February tab over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually copy this slide by tapping on it. I'm gonna tap it again, hit paste. So I'll have the a duplicate slide. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm going to use my paintbrush, arrange it forward, and move it next to the other tab. And then move it back again. So now, whenever they click on February, it will flip to this side. And you're gonna repeat this process. So let's say they need to click on March, you're going to hit copy, you're gonna paste, you're gonna click on this tab and move it forward. And then move it all the way over there. And then arrange back. Thus, whenever you are finished with this process and you go to export it into an app like GoodNotes or Notability, um, whenever you click on the tab, it'll look like it's jumping to the other side. So I'm gonna repeat this process like one or two more times just so you get the idea. So I'm going to copy and paste. Okay, so there I've repeated the process a few more times. Obviously you would do this until all the tabs are on the left-hand side of the planner. One thing I wanna mention when you are linking your tabs, make sure that what slide you're linking it to matches the slide number of that page. Um, it's really easy, especially with really big planners, if you were linking the weeks and the days to easily mess up on tabs, that's an easy way to rack up to over 300 links, which sometimes gets tedious. So just be sure that you are making sure your numbers work out. Another thing is that if you are grouping elements to copy and paste and make things easier, make sure that when you go to link your tabs that you ungroup them. If I were to link and group together all 12 of my tabs and then I go to link them, it just, will not work out. It'll link me to the same page over and over again. So make sure that you ungroup your tabs. So this is what our planner is looking like. So now we have our planner, obviously. I would go in and add templates, the monthly template and the weeks and all that stuff. I might add in extra tabs. 
for different subsections of the planner. Again, if you want to know how to make the templates itself for the planner, go check out the video that I've already created up on my channel about it. But this is the basis of creating a planner. So now I'm just going to show you how to export your creation into an app like GoodNotes to use. So let's say this is my finished product. To export, I'm going to go up here to the three dots in the right hand corner. I'm going to click this. I'm going to click export. And then I want to make sure that I am exporting it as a PDF, just so I can make sure that I'm making use of the links that I created within my slides. So I'm going to click PDF and I'm just going to export. And then it gives me a bunch of different options. Sometimes I'll airdrop it to my computer. Um, you can copy it to you Google Drive if you have Google Drive or copy it directly into GoodNotes. So I'm going to copy it directly into GoodNotes and I'm going to import this as a new document. So now I have it opened up into one of the folders I have on GoodNotes. So here is my planner file and this is how it looked in Keynote and this is how it will look in GoodNotes when you export it. So to make use of the links that you created, you want to make sure that you have the no pen tool selected. And currently as is, it is deselected in GoodNotes, but if it were selected, GoodNotes would look like this. You would have all your tools up at the top, and so that's how you know whether or not your pen tool is selected. So now I have my open planner file. I can't click the links, and they're not working because I don't have the pen tool deselected. So I'm gonna go up here, and it just looks like a pen with a line through it, and I'm gonna click, can click the links, and it'll jump to whatever I sign it as. And before I leave you guys with the tutorial, I wanted to show you just examples that I have previously created planners. So here is a planner that I created and it's available in my shop. The fonts are a little messed up here on the side. The fonts don't normally look like that. But so this is a planner that I created where it looks like the tabs are flipping on the side. As you can see, projects like this are a little bit more tedious because it's more difficult to use master slides whenever you want your tabs to flip. And so if, um, so January is linked to 41, this is the 41 page. And so whenever I click any of my tabs, it'll have 41. So here I used a master slide for this. And then I went in and created the flipped tabs individually as non-master slides. So as you can see, it looks like the tabs are flipping, but really I'm just moving the tab over to the other side. So there's just an example of one planner that I created that has the tabs flipping. So let's go into another example I created. I don't just need this tutorial to create planners. You can also use them to create notebooks. So here's a notebook that I created that's available in my shop. Here is a great option for using master slides. So we can go in and see what master slides I created for this project. Yeah, see, I just created the one blank page and then added my templates on top of that page. So once I created my blank master slide and I went in, I added these different templates that are within this planner. So this is something that I added on top of the blank page. And then all the tabs I linked within the master slide, so then all the linking is copied onto all the other slides. So this is just another example of something that you can do with this tutorial. You can create this planner. So yeah. So with that being said, this is the end of the tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments and I will try my best to answer them. I also have the answering your digital planner questions video up on my channel if you want to check that out first. This can get really tedious, especially when it comes to linking, even using master slides. So if you find this difficult to follow at first, you are not alone. This takes a while to get and it can really be rewarding once you do figure it out. I hope you found this video helpful. I'm glad that I could film an updated version of this video for you and yeah. <music>